All right, hello everyone. Um, yeah, my name is Kenneth Sealsnut, and um, today I'm going to be presenting about a application that um, Kat Thornton and I are developing called the Digital Preservation Wikibase. I'll go over a couple sections um, where I try to categorize the, the talk a little bit to, to give a little bit of a roadmap. Um, so I'll first talk about the collaboration uh, in terms of the, the universities and institutions involved. Uh, then I'll talk about what is a wiki base, kind of demystify what, what I'm referring to when I say digital preservation wiki base, and then um, talk a little bit of some of the, the growing pains and challenges that we hit in, in ways to align the data for a new data model um, that, that solves our, our um, main use case with easy. And then um, kind of tying into the previous talk, building that camaraderie and that ecosystem and talking about where um, you can learn more and, and even start, uh, for, start today with developing similar tools. All right, so with collaboration um, for the digital preservation um, wiki base, this work is um, done in, as a collaboration with myself and Kat Thornton. We did a, um, we, our, our skill sets align very well where we have a very much an over, overlapping set of skills where I'm approaching this from a computer science and software engineering background. Cat is pro pro um, approaching this from information science and system architecture. So we collaborate on how do we take a new data model, how do we build um, the tools around it, make sure that it's scalable, make sure that it's it's going to support um, future use cases and even edge cases that um, we that I see in in the software engineering space. And so some of the the differences between our work um, are, Cat will work on um, building um, the the core data models in the schema registry. And then I'll work on the um, data ingestion pipelines and the automated bots um, to, to populate our wiki base. And then from an institutional support, um, this work is entirely um, uh, for the emulation as a service project at Yale University. Um, we um, are thankful to have the donation of thousands of, upon thousands of software titles um, from the National Institute of Standards and Technologies um, National Software Reference Library, which I'll refer to as NSRL. Uh, going forward. Um, they contributed tons and tons of software um, in raw disks, in um, packaged materials, and um, to help populate our emulation as a service initiative, um, which leverages the, the, um, the wiki base that we established. And so the purpose for this wiki base is to be able to catalog all of the decisions around um, the, the right configurations for uh, performing for our emulators and um, and operating the, the software that um, we were um, provided. So um, a lot of people may have heard of Wikidata and not specifically Wikibase, so I wanted to kind of explain the difference between them. Um, and if this is your first time hearing either of those two terms, I hope this will also help kind of um, uh, align some things there. Um, so Wikidata is a project of the Wikimedia Deutschland um, community, and it's very similar to Wikipedia where it's a fully versioned wiki where you can see change history. You, you have a full open access collaborative environment. Um, but the difference between that and, and Wikipedia is that all of the data behind it is uh, purely structured content. Um, there's a triple store where you're able to make statements about every single um, entity and, and its relation to other entities um, in the world. And so taking the broadest lens out, um, Earth is Q2 um, in Wikidata, just to give an example that we all are familiar with. Um, so Q2 um, allows us to have a multilingual um, support where not everyone can refer to the same thing as Earth if it's, an, if it's said in a different language. We're able to break down the barrier of human language being a gap in terms of transferring information from, from person to person and project to project. Um, one awesome feature that this also supports is that the um, database behind it is fully accessible and you can query it as a full as a full query language so you can enter information as both a human or a machine and read it out and integrate it with other tools in the same way um, so naturally this becomes not only a hub for self curation small projects but also bigger institutions populating this this data set um, with much more robust data in um, allowing more bridges to, to link across the web. And so um, the Wikidata has become a hub for many external identifiers around the, around the web, such as Pronom, um, and, and using those signatures and identifiers um, as a way that, that you can anchor um, uh, teams, teams and projects together. Pulling a layer back is where I, where's 
where I refer to as Wikibase. Um, that is the software that powers Wikidata. And this software is free, open source, and it's a fully versioned wiki as well. Um, Wikidata is built on top of this infrastructure, so when we were evaluating the tools um, for building out our new knowledge base for um, the metadata describing our software catalog, um, we already know that Wikidata and Wikibase are, are reaching scale. Um, we also know that there's a growing community around it. There's support in um, that because this, this information is open source and, and people can self-host their own Docker images, um, we, we are able to get even better uh, maintenance and support um, through the community as well. And so breaking down some of the reasons in addition to that why we chose this architecture, um, so not only is it open, open and scalable, um, I already touched on the fact that it's readable and writable, but not only that, um, with the Sparkle language, um, with using RDF and other linked, linked data um, um, query languages, you're also able to connect um, other data sources together in, in a single query. And I'll do a little demonstration of what that would look like towards the end of the talk. Um, but so this allows us to have a large data set of our own, but not make sure, but not have it be siloed to only our use case. We can, anyone can access it directly into our data set, but also this data set can be queried in combination with um, another reference point. And then um, other design patterns that we considered, uh, me coming from a software engineering background, um, personally I was um, um, very much a, uh, you know, steward of relational databases, things like SQL and uh, MySQL, Postgres, as well as NoSQL, uh, such as MongoDB. And so for, for us, and when we were thinking about ways to, to build this new um, data source, we saw that um, that's gonna require a lot of software engineering um, to build something that can pull a lot of the richness that's already in Wikidata, translate that over, and then build something that we can have for our own use cases. Just thinking of the APIs that we would have to establish, um, a lot of the manual translations that, that might not map up one-to-one -one with Wikidata, um, that opened a lot of room for um, complexity issues as we try to scale a growing data set. And so um, when we already know that the, the knowledge base um, uh, schema has really been, been effective for our use cases so far. We really wanted to double down on that and, and make sure that this can be integrated with the larger data source um, so that we can have more expressive queries with other providers uh, as well as out of the box CRUD operations so we're not spending as much time building user interfaces where we could be building the future of the problems that we're trying to solve. And so now I'll go into a little bit of how we went about approaching uh, starting out our wiki base and kind of getting into the real um, um, problems that we were trying to solve. So when the NSRO gave us their data set, um, we received, like I said, thousands of software titles in their collection. Um, what we've been trying to extract out of that is knowing what metadata is needed to actually run that um, software in an emulated environment. And so when we're trying to pre-configure environments, we need to be as precise as possible. There are some room for ranges, but if we already have that documented somewhere, we really wanted to use the, the recommendations of the software providers first. And so that took um, a lot of effort in terms of human curation to read through the packaging, read through the, the guides, as well as using sources um, around the web that might already know um, what, what data or what um, operating system, for example, best supports the software. Um, so the NSRL did give us things such as the de developer name, the publisher name, um, like I said, all the metadata around how to operate the systems, and then um, as well as every record um, is giving into our ingestion pipeline with a unique identifier as well um, that I'll refer to as the NSRL ID uh, throughout the project. And then on the Wikidata side, um, when we were evaluating the alignment um, of the two systems, um, one of the potential paths we could have had was using Wikidata as the store for all of this data that we're trying to use for easy. Um, and so when we were an analyzing what the existing domain looked like and really trying to model it out, um, we noticed that yes, there's metadata describing operating, and operating systems and file formats, which is um, because they're a little bit smaller than the full spectrum of software is, a, is an entire domain. Um, there's much fewer items to manage, much fewer items to maintain, and so oftentimes there, there's not a lot of change history, so that we recognize that as a very valuable source um, for, that, for that material. Um, we saw that this also helps us link data um, from a much broader context than we have um, with the rest of 
with just using the NSRL data specifically, such as while we have the developer's name, Wikidata can give us where the developer is in the world, how long they've been a developer, where the publishing connections are, and things like that. Similarly with scholarly articles and references, every statement in Wikidata in our Wikibase has the ability to be referenced back so you can see the source and the provider of every claim that's made um, in case there are any conflicts um, going forward. But one central problem that we saw was that software in general um, is described one per title and then sometimes we'll see from your popular, more, um, more widely used pieces of software, there will be one item per version. With our project, we really wanted to make sure that all of the branches in terms of um, the combinations of, of metadata that would go into running a piece of software for a specific version on a specific machine, we wanted to make sure that those were all aligned together. And so um, our proposal was to diverge from Wikidata, which I'll get into in a second, um, and, and, but still maximize all of the content and the richness that's still in Wikidata uh, as, as a whole. And so, um, like I said, with the alignment process for the EASY project, um, we really wanted to have a clear set of sources. So our connections with Wikidata today in our Wikibase are, we use subsetting to grab all the operating systems, file formats, human languages, really to seed our, our Wikibase with as little information as possible. Um, really just wanted to use that as a shared identifier. Um, so then the um, source of truth can always maintain um, in, the, in the core the core data set. But then where we branched off is, is more specific to our use case as having a one-to-one -one relationship for essentially um, the, the permutation of software title, human language, operating system, and version. So then at every decision point there, we can change or um, optimize what the minimum RAM is or the default save location is depending on what the, what the, um, the, the different operating systems expect. And so we saw that that's not really appropriate for the Wikidata domain. It's so specific to our use case that, and, and the use case of digital preservation, that we didn't want to bloat or cult clutter the Wikidata ecosystem where we can still have a database that's maintaining that information that's still interoperable between the two. And so introducing the, the um, new Wikibase that we created for our domain use cases, um, which um, will hopefully be valuable for the rest of our community here as well. And so the steps that we took was we first um, provisioned a new Wikibase. There are many ways to go about it. Um, I'll, I have a link at the end of the deck that has um, the links to the Wikidata and Wikibase um, sign-up registry. And so um, there's ways that you can self-host through their Docker image as well as um, through a project by Adam Shoreland has a project that allows you to cloud host um, through what was originally WB Stack and now is um, being migrated over to Wikibase Cloud. Um, which is a, a be open beta right now. And so we're um, piloting this program with them and, and seeing um, how to use this as a cloud hosted um, provider at scale as well. And so once we established our core wiki base, we get out of the box Sparkle query endpoint. We get um, all of the visual CRUD operations. You, you have the user interface there. Um, and then our next step is figuring out what properties we want to manage. So that's where going back to the Wikidata subsetting, all of the data that we really wanted to stay in the authoritative space in Wikidata proper, um, we just pulled down things like the label and the, the identifier that is in Wikidata, so we're intentionally not pulling down all of the extra metadata so that we're not building two forks, uh, such as our first problem uh, that we talked about in the first paper. Um, so uh, then the next step uh, is making sure that in everywhere that we're pulling data from Wikidata, we're maintaining that mapping. So we have a custom property called P6, which um, denotes where in Wikidata that property is used. Um, and so um, then we can have those direct linkages between our Wikibase and the Wikidata UUIDs um, for federated queries, which I'll show in a second. So after we get the property namespaces and the schema set up, um, the next task is to then populate all of the data. Um, so first, there was through a lot of human and automated curation, um, we cleaned the raw data set, extracted all the, the materials that we could um, and get all of the met metadata together. We produced those into a set of parsable CSVs. And then we um, scripted some bots to using Wikidata Integrator, which is a project out of the Sioux Labs of the Scripps Research Institute out of the US, um, which is a Python package that allows you to move or upload or contribute Wikidata entities um, from any Wikibase to another. Um, so we were allowed to um, 
pull down data from Wikidata, populate it into Wikibase. Um, similarly, this project generated a bunch of new instances of developers and publishers and software, and we were able to contribute those back to, to Wikidata itself as well. So we are able to maintain that bi-directional um, speak with, with our endpoints. And then after we cleaned the data set, we wanted to disambiguate. So we wanted to make sure that when we're talking about Word, Microsoft Word, it's the specific version, it's a specific language, and so forth. So um, we really wanted to be as fine-tuned as possible by going through and um, human curating the, the data set to make sure that there's no edge cases, no bugs, um, and, and then in an automated fashion, scoring each record to see if, um, um, with the complexity score to make sure that everything is um, going into our Wikibase safely. And then once everything is in Wikibase, in our Wikibase, then we wanted to verify conformance. So we're using Shex as our um, schema validator, as well as our um, template for knowing how to contribute data um, for the future as well. So we, we kind of light the, the trail there for any future contributors and knowing where do you begin, you can always refer back to our schemas for what, what do we mean by software title or what do we mean by file format. Uh, and then the composite key um, throughout the data set itself to check for duplicates and check for um, updating versus creating uh, would be the NSRL ID, the software title, version, and so forth. And so <clears throat> now we'll see some, some um, w how this could be applied in, and actually I'll, I'll go back for a second, how this can really be applicable for Wikidata as a whole. Um, so we can use this for building federated Sparkle queries, which allows us to cross multiple um, uh, Sparkle endpoints or Wikibase endpoints and pull in data, um, aggregate them together all in, in a single round trip. And excuse the formatting in the, in the corner, but um, we'll get that cleaned up. But the code itself is um, on the side here is demonstrating that we can have a query that can say things, for example, what are some of the scholarly articles about the file formats in our collection? Um, and, and so showing the links here, we can, in a single query, we can check from starting at our wiki base, say, hey, I have Jupyter Notebook as a file format, and then end up with the DOI for actually reading about a, a, an academic article that really um, mentions this and was used in the field. So this hopefully helps address some of the, the registry constraints and like knowing how conferences like these can actually trickle into the community and, and future use cases, um, even through automated fashions. Um, so for example, with this query, uh, we're able to use that, that Wikidata mapping as the single um, bridge that connects from our Wikibase that really has the information about the label and then the information about the article itself um, is all in Wikidata proper. So you're able to, to use that mapping as the, the bridge to connect the two in the single query and then get the, the final result back. Similarly, other questions we could ask of the data are um, maybe this is a piece of software you're not familiar with and you're wondering, is there anywhere on the web that it, there's a user manual for it? Um, and a lot of the software could be in other languages such as this one, um, but this is actually an Italian um, piece of software where some of the members of our team wouldn't be able to actually operate it even if we knew the, the environment that is um, needed to, to run in. So we're able to use that NSRL identifier to know that we're talk, refer, referring to the exact language and software version and still use that Wikidata mapping as the bridge between our two data sets and then um, link right directly to um, the, the Internet Archives version of um, the user manual for this guide. And then on to ecosystem. So I added some links here on kind of the, the bird's eye view on where Wikibases are headed in re relation to Wikidata. Um, so in 2021, the Wikimedia Deutschland um, team put together a Wikibase strategy that I would definitely encourage anyone interested in this project to read. It talks about um, using smaller subsets where um, domain um, experts can really curate the data that they know best. And, and still have the ability to have a central hub for other Wikibases and other uh, knowledge graphs going forward. Um, so this is gonna help make sure that the, this content is well maintained. Um, we're, we're trying to help make sure that this is enriching the, the semantic web as well. And then as well as uh, Wikibases and libraries um, offered their manifesto as well. And so I added a link to that uh, for, for a quick read. And then uh, back to the point about um, where do I begin? Um, so, with all tools, uh, like we were saying earlier, um, 
there needs to be some sense of registry. There needs to be some sense of discoverability and interoperability. Um, so one place to start if um, you just want to explore um, would be the Wikibase registry. Itself is a Wikibase um, about Wikibases, so it's very nerdy. Um, but um, then if you are interested and you already have a use case in mind, um, there's plenty of scholarly publications out there that reference how they They've done a lot of the same um, challenges. They've went through a lot of the same um, support and, and um, use cases. Um, so I put a link for Scolia, which is a, a Wikidata um, tool that allows you to quickly see all publications in visual ways um, related to the topic. Um, as well as there's a um, pretty robust Wikibase community user group. And then lastly, the Wikibase website for tips and tricks on how to get one started um, yourself. And so yeah, I, we as a team really appreciate the support of our funders, the Sloan Foundation and the Mellon Foundation, and uh, thank you all so much. Thank you very much, Kenneth. So now we have time for more questions. Are there any questions for, there's one, James, at the top. Um, thank you so much for, well, first for the shout out for Adam Shoreland, um, Wikimedia Deutschland, um, and the whole kind of Wikibase Cloud community, which are just doing amazing work at the moment. Um, and I'm also, as someone who runs a Wikibase, very sympathetic to your needs around diverging from Wikidata, and it's really good to see other examples of how people are making that decision about why to diverge and why not. Um, I, I wonder if you could say a bit more about the, what you called your bi-directional speak with Wikidata, but also, the, I guess, from the perspective of the Wikidata side rather than your side, um, and maybe, maybe how that helps to sustain the work of an independent Wikibase. Um, so I wonder if you say more about some of the joins, I guess, you have from your Wikibase on Wikidata. Um, so not just you using Wikidata as a source. Are you, are you, for example, have you made your Wikibase like a trusted source when you make references on Wikidata and things like that? Have you have you set yourself up as having identifiers <laughs> even on Wikidata? I just wonder if you could say something a bit more about how, because I guess one of the things I often worry about Wikibases is like, how do they get sustained in the longer term and how do they get used and found? And building into those infrastructures of Wikidata and how it works seems so important. Yeah, absolutely. And so um, and that, that's an excellent question. So the way that we give back to Wikidata is often through when we're populating information. A lot of the times with our library's collection, this is the first time it's maybe even referenced on the web. Um, so a lot of the, the publishers and de developers didn't exist in Wikidata before the project. So when we start seeding our information, starting with our Wikibase, we're doing a check to see, does this information already exist that we want to be the authoritative information? If not, then we'll create it there, use the references that, that we are the ones that created it, and have references back to our bot, and then similarly create those same internal IDs that we can then refer to in our applications back to the same information bat, um, to, to Wiki, Wikidata proper. And yeah, and we also wanted to treat this more as, um, giving us room for the future growth. Um, so there's more we can do around at petitioning for pro special properties being added and external identifiers. But first, we wanted to make sure that this would be something that really fit our use case first and, and did it well. And then if there are other teams and collaborators that want to join in on that use case, then, that, then it would be more appropriate for us to use other properties uh, on the Wikidata namespace. Great. Any other questions? OK, then I have a quick question. Uh, you are saying that uh, this Wikibase is yeah, closely integrated with the Easy. Can you say a few words about that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the data that we're curating for through this Wikibase is um, really designed to build the, um, the decision points needed for the emulated environment. So, um, if you were to see an item in our Wikibase, they would have things such as the minimum RAM requirements, the operating system, and XYZ. And so the, the emulation as a service project um, allows us to, um, to leverage that data that we're curating there um, and build out UIs to make those selections, even drop downs in the future, and things like that. So. Super interesting. And because, yeah, the theme of, uh, of this session is community. Let's get back a bit to the community uh, question. 
how do you see the community using this respectively how can the community help you with this project? yeah um, so in terms of the community itself I think there's two ways to answer that the digital preservation community could really um, collaborate in this space this is something that we all are dealing with software and all all are trying to, to figure out the best ways to preserve it and, and make sure that it lives on um, past our our human lives and, and being able to run it for generations to come um, so when we're given um, the tools that can allow us to make even mental models of what the, how things were running and then having um, standards such as emulation to be able to guarantee that those are, will be able to run in the future. Bringing more partners along I think is, is definitely a, a viable source. Um, and then broader than digital preservation, I, I, I see that people who are building wiki bases or contributing to knowledge graphs um, are able to contribute ways in, in ways that they don't even realize they're doing. For example, someone wrote a biography about a developer that might not have any idea on how that could show up in an emulation as a service project. Um, and you know, it's tying that data together through a knowledge graph that doesn't have constraints on the schema, um, for example, um, allows us to, to fill in those gaps where people can be domain experts at every step of the way. That sounds super interesting. Um, I think we can segue from this into the general Q&A, but before that, Let's uh, say thank you once again to Kenneth for his presentation.